Hi, I'm Greg Kading. Uh, here we are again, first time. This is a, a first for me. First in person, anyways. Yeah, first in person. Again, I, I kind of feel tired of, uh, on this subject because we talk about it many times, but I, mm. I don't feel like the audience comprehends it much. Okay. You know, um, the Dossier podcast. Mm -hmm. I know uh, they contacted you to go, go on there and, I guess, debate them. What was the... Kind of. I mean, there was a process to it, and ultimately it just ended up going nowhere because I don't think we were all agreeing to the terms and conditions. I wasn't going to go on their podcast and give them content because I don't agree with what they do. Um, and so I said, happy to debate because I'll debate anybody on this subject, but on neutral ground, on a place where it's unbiased and objective. And so, um, you know, for them, I think they're more interested in content and I wasn't going to contribute to that because I don't believe in what they do. Right. I believe you, you have stated that you would be willing to debate Phil Carson. I'll right? debate anybody on this subject. And on when it has to, ground. yeah, on mutual ground. Um, and, and maybe even do it properly where you have an actual, you know, a, uh, you know somebody that's overseeing the debate. Because um, sometimes debates can get heated and if you don't have a moderator sitting there like keeping people you know within you know a certain time frame people just carry on and go down rabbit trails so you know the audience suffers from that right. so you need to have somebody moderate it and like okay you got 30 seconds you got 30 seconds you can respond you can respond and that's the best way to host or to provide a debate otherwise it just turns into an argument right and then emotions get involved and it goes to shit. what was your thoughts on uh, reggie's debate with phil carson Again, I, th I think I've commented on this. Um, I, I, I don't know if he is fully prepared. I understand he was already suffering some of the consequences of being ill with COVID. And, uh, you know, I think he could have done better, but I wasn't impressed with Phil either. You know, Phil was just kind of patronizing Reggie. You know, hey, I'm going to try, I'm gonna tr try to shut you up before you hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't yeah, know. I, 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 I don't even know what that was all about, but obviously that's, uh, you know, in the interest of, extracting information you don't tell people to shut up you know you want them to talk exactly and one 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 of the parts that, that kind of made me laugh was when he um mentioned that david mack was from compton but could have mm -hmm. named the high school that he went to mm -hmm. I, I mean you would think that if you're an investigator you would have that information well it's been some time so you know i'll give him a, you, you can give him a pass on that because um, you know, this all happened so long ago. I mean, we're approaching 25 years for Tupac, 26 years, or, you know, it'll be 25 years for Biggie next year. And, you know, years go by, information kind of fades. And, um, you know, if he doesn't have everything at his, you know, immediate disposal regarding David Mack, that, that's to be expected. Right. Um, now, Reggie had recently came out, uh, this is after he had COVID. And mm -hmm. The interview was put out by Mom first yesterday. Yeah. And he had mentioned that, well, first of all, I want to, I hope he gets well. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it was pretty tough for him. And he had said that he, so, that, that someone told him that you said he, you never offered him an immunity. Yeah. I don't, don't, don't want to like quote him, misquote him. Yeah, something to that effect. There's, you know, things get lost in translation and things are misunderstood. And so, you know, for Reggie, um, and he's adamant about this, and there's, I'm sure there's a, um, there, there's a resolution to these two, what appear to be two different sides of the coin. And for Reg, Reggie, he says, like, if I, it was really hard to hear that podcast because he's obviously breathing through the help of a respirator and that type of thing. Um, but he says, hey, I'm disappointed. And, you know, there was a, an agreement and this agreement was really between the U.S. Attorney's Office and his attorney. And so there could have been these mechanisms or these, this activity that I was unaware of. I don't have personal recollection of having the conversation about immunity with Reggie because it doesn't make sense to me. Because to offer somebody immunity, you first have to suspect that they're involved in some type of criminal act activity or have evidence to suggest that they're involved in criminal activity. Otherwise, what are you providing immunity for? And so we would never have walked in, hey, why don't we offer you a million? Because there was nothing, we had nothing, you know, on anything. 
Um, you know, some of the guys I was working with had looked into the possibility of him back at that time being involved in narcotics. We didn't have anything. Um, and then, of course, the Biggie murder, we had nothing in so far as any evidence linking him to that, which has been the conspiracy theorist platform for so long. So, we, you know, it, it didn't make any sense for us other than just go sit down, say, hey, Reggie, you've been interviewed a bunch of times by different members of law enforcement. Now let us have our turn. It wouldn't have made any sense to go in here like, well, we'll offer you an agreement to talk. So him and I can work that out. Um, I think that he feels like I said this in kind of a disrespectful manner. He says, yeah, Greg was joking about my COVID. Well, it, 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 this is how things get lost in translation. You know, I did say some of the effect like, I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe it's the COVID. But that's the kind of thing I would say to you if you and me are friends or if we know each other and I can sit there and go, you know what? I think AG's crazy. He's crazy. I think you're crazy. But when you hear it from somebody else or through the grapevine, all of a sudden you're thinking like, well, what does Greg mean like that? Why is he saying he thinks I'm crazy? You know, so it's, I meant it that way. I, of course, I didn't want anything bad to happen to Reggie, and I take this, his illness seriously. At the time I said it, it obviously wasn't anywhere near as serious as it turned out to be. So I would have had more sensitivity towards that. But... That's all that was. That's just a misunderstanding. And we'll work it out. I want to see the paperwork that he's alluding to. Right. That might refresh my memory. If there's a date or a signature or a reference on there, that may recall what this thing is that he's talking about. Could it have been anybody else from the task force that offered him this? No, not without my knowledge. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. okay. The city of LA and uh, Miss Wallace. Mm -hmm. I want to run down some things because we, we dug up some the, the court documents, it was just, what it was, it was just a bunch of back and forth between lawyers. Yeah. And I saw that David Mack's name was dropped from the lawsuit at one point. Of course. Why was, why was that? Because they knew that it would not be in their best interest. Their strategic approach to this lawsuit uh, was reinvented several times. And once they realized that they had nothing on Mac, it was not going to be in their best interest to pursue this cover-up scheme um, by having him involved. It, it kind of undermined it. Right. And so he was, he was dropped. Uh, Amir Muhammad was dropped. Um, you know, they were, they were relying, at least initially, on having credible witnesses. But as that process began to evolve towards court hearings and, and, and trials, they realized that the witnesses all turned out to be shit and they were going to get their asses kicked under cross-examination. You know, I read the questionnaires that the city's attorneys were going to go through with each and every one of the, the prosecution witnesses or the uh, plaintiff's witnesses. And it would have been, a, they would have had a field day with it. And the... Uh, plaintiff, I'm sorry, the attorneys for Valletta Wallace, they realized that our witnesses aren't the strongest and under strong cross-examination, um, they're going to, we're all going to look pretty stupid. Right. And I believe because they weren't on duty, let's say if, they, if this, this really happened, mm -hmm. David Mack, uh, Perez, if they weren't on duty, then the, LA, then the city of LA isn't liable. Again, th this is a constant reinventing of your strategy. So if David Mack's off duty, which he was, and you're alluding or alleging that he was involved in the murder, well, the LAPD is not responsible directly for what happens when an officer is doing something, you know, outside of work. And so then they're like, let's figure this out. Okay, what if he is using work tools? That's it. Let's say he's using police radios and therefore these, the skills of his trade are incorporated. Maybe that gives us that umbrella that'll connect him to the LAPD and the city and the big pockets. Well, okay, they can't get that, you know, because there's no real evidence of that. And so then it's like, well, what if Perez is involved? Perez was on duty. We'll drag him into it because he's on duty. And therefore now we've got that tether, that connection to, to the city. And, you know, this is about money. It always has and will be when it gets into you know, many of these civil cases. And so, you know, you have to keep reinventing your strategy to pursue that outcome to get paid and hope that you develop enough to where the city's like, okay, we'll just settle this. Well, this went from 
a threat of $400 million, $400 million down to less than $2 million. And the city still wouldn't budge. They're like, we aren't paying a dime on this thing. We're happy to go to court. Let's go to trial. Let's put your witnesses on the stand. They were that confident in it. Right. So what does that tell you about the case? It, 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 held, it held no weight. It held no weight. Uh, hey, again, guys, go to It's AGTV on YouTube. That's the homie, and uh, he's got a great YouTube channel. 